They're hitting it right on the drop. That weight pops that bobber and then bam, there's a second hit like that. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another one. Today I'm gonna to show you a tip on how to fish deeper water with bobbers and jigs. Today, water temps are pretty warm for this lake. Up north, 80 degrees or above 80 degrees is pretty warm water temps for natural lakes. Usually during most of the summer, we sit mid 70s. And when, what happens when these water temps get to that 80 plus degree mark, fish get a little bit deeper. Right now we're finding them in 20, 19 to 20 feet of water on some brush piles. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fish them deep without waiting for that jig to go all the way down to 15, 20 feet. Stay tuned. So today we're actually fishing crappie in about 20 feet of water, like I said. And a lot of times, if the bite is really finicky, a lot of people like to use a very small jig. And if you want to use that in combination with a slip bobber, it may take forever to get that jig to the depth you need. And a lot of times that bobber doesn't actually stand straight up and down. So a trick, make sure you put your slip on first. This is a rubber bobber stop. Next thing you're gonna do, take one of these bullet weights here. This is a 16th ounce of bullet weight. A lot of people use them for Texas rig setups. You're gonna slide that on the line. Then you're gonna take your barrel swivel, this thing right here. You're gonna tie that on. It's important to put that bullet weight on first, otherwise this is, <laughs> it's not gonna work for you. Mm, I should mention, if you use a, a slip bobber and you're actually going to put it using the grommet, using, put it through the, the actual grommet like that, uh, you should put that on the line above the bullet weight. In this case, I'm using these rod and bobs. These are rod and bobs, and cool thing about rod and bobs, they got two little notches. There's the bottom notch, and that is my slip bobber notch where I can actually just take my line just attach that slip bobber right above the bullet weight, just like that, let the spring go, and that bobber's just gonna slide up and down the line. So now, we're gonna attach a little bit of a leader to the bottom of that barrel swivel, and we'll be tying on our jig at the end of that, but we're gonna be using a super light jig. If you're using a 16th ounce or a 32nd ounce, it really takes a long time when you're fishing 20 feet deep like we are today for that jig to get to that depth. And even if it does, it might not hold the bobber up and down. And so it might be really hard to find negative bites, but there's our leader tied on. All right, so something like this right here, great for holding your jigs, hair jigs. In this case, some tungsten jigs. These are some ice fishing jigs. This is a 1 32nd ounce tungsten. This is made by Euro Tackle. It's got that rubber bead there because it holds plastics on, so. That is what we're using today. Super small weight, super small weight, but this is gonna replicate fishing that deeper water. And since we're using a Eurotapical jig, let's just put on a Eurotapical plastic. By the way, these are phenomenal plastic keepers. If you have a ton of them like I do. Eurotapical. As you can see, I got a crap load of them here. And pink has been working the best. Let's go with this uh, fat, what is this? Curly peed pink. All right, let's put that on that little rubber bobber, or the little rubber on the hook it helps hold that plastic in place. So when those fish come up and try to pull it off, it just stays on there. Put it right over the plastic. And there you go. All rigged up. Ready to get bit. There's one. There we go. Oh my goodness. That was uh, not a crappie. All right, tied back up. I don't know what that was. It was not a crappie because it just bit me clean off. Throw that back in the water and there's a 
pile of them stacked up right there. Pile of fish. There they are. Stacked up. About 15 feet out. Get a little bit closer. Pitch this thing over there. There we go. But yeah, this thing, the line just shoots straight down because that, that bullet weight really takes it all the way down there. Plus now you got that tungsten jig, with, which helps out. Tungsten falls a lot faster than lead. That's why ice fishing guys use it. Right there. Do your thing. Do your thing, Mr. Bobber. Oh, there he is. Got him. Got him. That pink has been phenomenal the past couple days. He's barely hooked. See you, buddy. He's a release. That pink color, along with chartreuse. That pink has been phenomenal. Put our anchor up. That line just shoots straight down. If I was using that 30 second ounce jig by itself, it would take forever for that line to get there, for the hook to get down to that depth. There he is. They're just popping it. Yup. They'd be, they'd be nice fry, frying pan fish. Not monsters, but 10 inch fish. Great for the frying pan. They are deep though. This doesn't happen very often during the summertime where they get to that 22, 23 feet. Usually this is where they set up in the fall. When those temps start to drop in September, October, October especially, they'll start setting up on these deeper brush piles on that hard to soft bottom transition. Oh gosh dang. All plastics and they're just hammering it. They're just taking it right down. No question. Just that micro finesse style plastic and they're just inhaling it. When you work in a plastic, you do got a jig, you can't just let it sit there. Unless that bite is super hot. Oh, there he is. There we go. Another cookie, cookie cutter 10 incher. Come on, bud. There he is. There we go. We choked it too. He inhaled that bait. So a lot of times I get asked, what is the ideal slip bobber rod? And here, here's what my bias is. I personally, get that guy back. I personally really like these eight footers. They're that perfect hybrid between casting, vertically jigging. If you're gonna spend money on one kind of panfish and kind of finesse multi-species rod, this is the one I would buy. Um, great for vertical jigging. Great for slip bobber. And great for casting if you got smaller, let's say smaller jigs or smaller crankbaits maybe. You got a little bit heavier crankbait, I would go with the 7.6 if you like casting a little more. There we go. Got him. Oh no, he had it. Had it. Come on, buddy. Hit it again. Tap. Yep. They're just sucking it straight in. But I definitely go with the 8 footer if you're thinking of vertically jigging casting smaller jigs, maybe even smaller crankbaits, or these slip bobber setups, eight footers are where it's at. Let's get back on them, there we go. They're stacked up right below the boat on that brush pile. Deep too, my goodness, 16 feet. Oh, here we go, hit it. Oh, oh man. They're hitting it right on the drop. That weight pops that bobber and then bam, there's a second hit. Like that. Just like that. Just one of those times 
small, small jig. No plastic, or no minnows, only plastics. Catch yourself a ton of crappie. A ton of eaters. Nine inch eater. See if we can catch a few more. Got them as soon as it drops down there. They smack it. This is fun. <laughs> this is fun. When they're biting one after another like this, this is a lot of fun. I don't care if they're not giants. It's still fun to catch them. I'm trying not to put on another plastic. I'm trying to use as much of this plastic as I possibly can. But they have torn this thing up. Right in front of the boat. There it stops and wait for the pop. Is he running with it? There it is. Yep. <laughs> it's almost immediate. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's going to end it. They're absolutely inhaling. Check that out. They're inhaling that bait. All the way down there. Not big one, but they are quality eating fish. If I was frying them up tonight, I'm not. Because I don't feel like cleaning a bunch of fish. But uh, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, super simple setup. Well, a little more complicated than a regular slip bobber, but if you're fishing some smaller jigs and you need to get them down to those deeper levels, this is how you do it. Put that bullet weight on there. There we go, pops right out. Put that bullet weight on there. Shoots that small jig all the way down to that depth you need to. Try that setup out. It'll catch you some fish. Hopefully bigger ones than this, but let me know if you got any questions, post them in the comment section below. Otherwise you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you.